what inspired you to get into acting? What matters is the story and how you craft it. You've answered a lot of the questions already with that one answer, so that's why. <laughs> I would say it's not going to be easy, mm -hmm. but so many people give up on their dream right before the success is about to come. And so keep pushing and know that you have to fight for your dreams and it may take time. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. Thank you. Hi there, welcome to Film Forums. My name is Aisha Jmeli and I have with me a special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, great to, great to be with you today. I'm Ryan Donald Smith. Can you tell us a little bit more about your filmmaking background? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my background, I kind of started um, in that's uh, early production on set, working in feature films, really learning uh, the film production um, industry through and through from each department and understanding how the camera works to the lighting, um, everything kind of of the onset physical production side. And, and that gave me my love for filmmaking, uh, watching, watching films be made. More recently, I've moved into the packaging development and film financing side of things where I have the opportunity to find great stories, work on those stories, develop them, work with my team, uh, put the financing together to actually make the movie and then do the physical production um, all the way through distribution on the end. And so um, I do that now uh, with a couple of, of companies on, on the film finance side. I have a film finance uh, production company called Streamline Global. And then I also have a studio in South Georgia called Thomasville Pictures. Fantastic. Okay, so you're obviously going to have a wealth of knowledge that our viewers are going to want to know about for sure. And where can people watch your movies? Where can people get your most recent content? So our film, The Trial of Chicago 7, is out on Netflix. Um, we're really excited about that. I have another film, The Tax Collector, that's on Amazon. Um, and then we have a few movies. Um, uh, gosh, we have uh, quite a few, but they're, they will be coming out over the next 12 months. So we have a film called The Tiger Rising um, with Dennis Quaid and Queen Latifah coming out in the next year and we just finished filming one called One Way with Machine Gun Kelly and Kevin Bacon and Travis Fimmel um, that will also be about a year um, till, till it sees the screen but if you have a moment we're very very proud of the trial of Chicago 7 um, that's out on Netflix around the world currently. Fantastic we will definitely be checking it out. You mentioned line production being kind of one of the starting points for you. How would yes. you say that being a line producer helped you to be a better producer and executive producer later on down the line? Oh you know it, absolutely and, and you know there were some theories in, in early in life of people that I've met in, in management in really big companies and in some companies they make you go work in every single department you know to get an understanding of, hey, this is really how this works. And so um, early on in my career, I gosh, I started working on little tiny web videos um, and, and commercials and music videos and digital content, new media pieces. All of those elements really taught me the logistics of filmmaking. And I think it's really important because um, now, you know, I work in on the finance side and on the packaging side. And so I'm really able to take that knowledge of, um, all of the logistics that it takes in filmmaking to create great content, but I understand uh, the realities of how things work. I understand how uh, the electric package and the grip package are going to function with the camera and, and at what level we should set costs associated to each of those items. And so it helps me also protect my projects um, from, you know, the line producer. Uh, I always say the line producer's job is to deliver a movie on time and on budget. And so you're overviewing you're going over everything on the film and, and you're over so many moving aspects, but you're really able, you know, I think with that understanding of physical production and, and diving in and, and getting some real life experience on set first before I went um, into the packaging and development side and film finance side. Now, I, I think that it does give me a bit of a competitive advantage um, because I really know through and through how these things work and how they're put together. And I think that's a great thing for anyone that, that's working in our industry um, to have that bit of knowledge of really, okay, this is how our great industry um, go, works from, from a physical production standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. I think understanding the, the functionality, a lot of people, you know, they, they want to make their own films, but they don't necessarily have the experience, you know, like to, to see how others have done it. Um, how did you go about getting that experience and what would you recommend that aspiring filmmakers do in order to get that, you know, such important experience under their belt? 
Yeah, you know, I tell everyone, I think this is, um, it, it's important to, and, and when I say put your time in, I don't mean it in a negative way, but I do think it's important to realize um, this industry is not an, an, an easy industry. You cannot just step into it today and make the biggest content in the world. Maybe there's one or two anomalies, but um, for me, my personal journey was years and years of, of working on projects. And like I said, I started with the, the very low budget, you know, piece of content. And, and today we didn't have the technology then, but today that type of content could be created on a smartphone, on an iPhone, on an Android, and, and, and then put into a, a, a a computer and and made into something special with one person really diving in you know into production and so you really starting in that way and getting your hands dirty a bit um, is how how I began at least and then that started to grow so I worked on projects that were a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and um, I call it work for higher side so on the more on the commercial side people paid me to produce for them. So whether it be a brand or, you know, a commercial for someone, a music video for someone, um, my company was paid to create that media, to create that work for them. And that really helped me. And, and, and I grew that very slowly. You start on a low budget and then we moved all the way up into multi-million dollar commercials, which are very large shoots um, on that. I, I then transitioned that into the film space. And when I went into the film space and actually started to create content there in, in film and television, I had to take a big back step. So I was doing, like I said, multi-million dollar projects and commercials, but my very first feature film had a budget of $200,000. And I think that's very important because um, I, in, in my experience, I started small. My next film was a little bit larger, around half a million dollars. The next film was, you know, seven figures. And then the next, and I, you know, you step up and up until I finally landed. You know, now we're, we're doing some wonderful uh, large scale independent production um, on a pretty big level. But I think for me personally, and I would, I would recommend for everyone not to dive into your dream of filmmaking and go try to make the biggest this is a 10, 15, $20 million movie, and it's my first one, and I'm going to make it. And, and even if you have that dream, pick a different project to try first that's smaller. And, and if your dream project is going to cost a lot of money, realize that and go do some other projects first that bring you up to speed and, and give you the knowledge and the expertise um, you know, to do the larger scale production. That's great advice. Thank you. And also when you're, you know, you mentioned about your first one being 200,000. How yeah. did you get that 200,000? Like what <laughs> did to actually get? Because that may not be a big budget, obviously, in terms of, you know, like the grand scale that's out there. But for aspiring filmmakers, <laughs> getting even a few thousand is, is hard, you know. So it'd be interesting Absolutely. to hear how you got there, you know. Yeah, you know, I was I was lucky in in that I had a a, a filmmaking friend and and um, he was willing to invest in, the, you know, this is transparent my story, but he was willing to invest the money to create his first piece project, right? And and I had the technical ex expertise to help him navigate and protect that money to deliver the movie. But what I would share for someone is. Like you said, if you're starting out, that is a, it is a lot of money. And um, I like to treat any movie, whether it be five dollars or five million dollars or fifty million dollars, right? Um, money is money, and it and it's it, you have to take it very serious that you're that you're spending money. And oftentimes, on our side, we're spending other people's money. And so, in in, in one, you know, the first rule in, of lesson I would say is be cognizant and careful with how you budget and how you allocate. Make sure you have an entire plan before you start spending money, whether it's yours or someone else's. Um, but as far as how to get the money, there's so many great platforms if you're starting out now and, and you're trying to really get projects made. So the first thing I would do is find the friends and family in, in, in and around you to, to get that first piece made. People that will work for free, people that are as passionate about your story as you are, and maybe, you know, whatever they may cost, maybe they'll work for 10% of what they would otherwise charge within the industry. There are so many great platforms out there now for crowdfunding, where if you have an amazing story, you can crowdfund and you can share your vision, your script, offer uh, different levels of, of uh, benefits, whether that be credits, um, things, and allow people to crowdfund into, into your film. 
Um, or you can go and, and find a partner, a production partner, a company where you do share that vision and a production company comes on and is willing to take the risk and invest um, and invest the funds. Now that, you know, again, if you're just starting out, I, you know, I want to say that's a long and hard road. And a lot of people think that that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go and they're going to just share this with five production companies and one of them is going to just write the golden check. And sometimes that happens. That's the reality. I've never had that happen for me personally, um, you know. But I know someone that went in and pitched Netflix uh, a story and walked out with ten million dollars, having never made a piece of content before. I would say that's one in a million chance. And so it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to really, I call it, bootstrap your way to to getting those first projects made. But I do think if you're passionate and you got to be patient. Um, it will come. And, and one key anchor of any, any type of putting projects together is finding cast. Um, because in our industry, cast brings a lot of value. And I know it's a bit of chicken and the egg because it's so much easier said than done. Go get a great cast and then you'll, the money will come. Um, and then you go to try to get the cast and they say, well, show us the money and maybe we'll consider a conversation. Um, but there are ways to find great actors and actresses, and these do not have to be major Hollywood names or, you know, stars. Um, get, get really good team around your project, and it will naturally, over time, you should be able to raise the money. Fantastic. So when you were casting, what did you have in mind? Um, you know, for what do you look for when you're casting? So, yeah, when we're, you know, when casting a project, gosh, Again, the media that we all create every day, and, and I, I lean more on the numbers and the business side than I do the creative, right, in, in the nature of what I do, but it all starts with great story. You, you know, no one is going to invest hard-earned money if they do not believe in the script and the story, and so um, when it comes to casting, again, technology has really helped us out. There's so many wonderful platforms where if you are an emerging filmmaker or just starting out, you don't have to hire some very expensive, um, you know, big name person to help you cast. Um, there are ways to get casting calls out online and really see a lot of great um, names. But, but I would say go, go from the heart when you're seeing an audition, share, you know, sides, we call them sides with the actors to audition and, and really watch, um, make sure you do a chemistry read. A lot of people will, will love two different people and they play an intricate role together in, in a movie. Um, let's call it a father and son, right? And so, but what they don't realize is that the chemistry on screen, screen is absolutely terrible. So make sure you take time to do, if someone's interacting well, a, a good majority of a movie together, make sure that you're doing a, a chemistry read to make sure that the actors work well together and, and, and that it presents itself in a natural and realistic way on screen, whatever that may be, whether that's love or anger or frustration or, you know, whatever they're playing, make sure you try that out in, in different ways. But, but I do think casting is very, very important. It's worth taking, um, taking the time to really, really connect and find the right actors before you jump into a project. And talking of projects, if you could tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your most recent project that's obviously going to be available for people to see soon. Can you tell us about your your process there? What was your your whole process? Not not just casting, but like, how did you come up with, you know, choosing to, to tell the story and everything, you know? Yeah, so so uh, you know, I'll give you the example of the per, of the film we're going into production on right now. We've done quite a few. We've been very lucky to have a lot of projects in motion currently, and so right now I'm working on a, a project, a film project called Supercell, and um, and for specifically with this one, um, Jamie Winterstern, our director, uh, is is a young emerging first time director. So that, you know, is an exciting, uh, exciting opportunity for us. And at the same time, we have to put protections in place to make sure that, that we empower him to do an amazing job on the film. And we know that he's going to do a wonderful job. We cast Alec Baldwin um, in the film. And so we are, we are quickly moving into the pre-production phase where we start to put together the rest of the elements. And so what we're doing, I'm actually in my office in Georgia. Uh, we film a lot of our projects in, in Georgia. It's a wonderful um, you know, state where there's tons and tons of incentives to be here. So speaking a bit to the financial side, 
Um, Jamie has had created this great story, developed it into a script. I partnered with a, a good friend of mine, Ryan Winterstern, who had uh, really what I called packaged the movie. He put together the script and the story and connected a sales company. A sales company will oftentimes help you get foreign pre-sales or get connections so that you can cash flow your movie. Um, and so Highland Film Group came on board for with us and um, we attached Alec Baldwin and then Highland Film Group took the film to market and sold, um, which, was, which was what allowed us to cash flow the movie is that our, our sales agency sold international territories around the world. Um, and so we, we've actually locked in pretty much worldwide distribution prior to even making the film, which we're very excited about. So now we're at the place where we are both doing, we're doing our budgets, we've created our budget, we've cast, we've put everything together and are moving into the pre-production phase. So once we get there, what's going to happen, um, we will travel everyone to location, continue the casting process, and, um, and then actually film the project. So that's a little bit on our latest uh, project there. So, you know, the, the cash flowing idea, I've, I've heard that being done quite a lot. Um, and obviously you were saying about incentives to stay in, to, to film in Georgia, to shoot in Georgia. I've heard also quite a lot that a lot of films that are LA productions end up actually being shot in Georgia. Um, yes. What are some of the financial benefits for filmmakers looking to make that swap? Yeah, absolutely. So, so there's a couple of benefits. One, and I love Los Angeles. I live in California. I live in LA. I, you know, I love, I love LA. Um, but there's just a few benefits of coming to the state of Georgia. Georgia's done a wonderful job of creating a tax incentive incentivation plan. And so they incentivize filmmakers by basically the the there's a little bit more brass tax here, but basically they give you 30 cents for every dollar you spend. So, so the state allows you, and let's, let's say you come here and you spend a million dollars. Um, if you spend a million dollars locally within the state of Georgia, they will give you $300,000 of your budget is the, sh is the short, you know, it's a little bit more complex than that, but that's the basics. So then when you're going out and you're raising money, you no longer have to raise a million. You now have to raise 700,000. Um, which is a great, great benefit. So um, additionally, LA is a very busy place. There's a lot of traffic and, and, you know, different things there. It's a little bit harder to get access to locations. You know, films obviously have been around for, for years and years and years, and it's a little bit newer in Georgia. So access to um, locations is slightly easier. Traffic is not as bad. Hotel room rates are a little bit cheaper here. And so Georgia is a wonderful place to film. We absolutely love it. And they support us as filmmakers and what we're doing. Um, you know, the other, the other part of the financing is talking about that pre-sales. So then we, um, we raise a bit of equity. Um, and, and equity, you know, is the finance, uh, we call it, uh, it's a bit of the risky part, right, of, of the film finance structure. Um, and so it's, it's friends, family, investors, production companies, whatever it may be that are going to put in the equity for your movie. And so a good example would be, let's call on a $1 million budget, $300,000 um, in equity. So you raise, that's the money you would actually go raise. Um, and in, in the early days, I was doing this with friends and family and mentors. And, you know, you go around and, and you may have a lot more investors to get to that 300,000. Um, but all of a sudden you have 300,000 in equity and then 300,000, you know, from the state of Georgia. Now you, what we call the shortfall is 400,000. So then a sales company can go sell foreign territories and bring in that remaining $400,000 for you. Um, you, you, it's a little bit more difficult because you have to cash flow all of this. So you bring in a lender and the lender will, will do a loan on the movie. And that loan will consist of the state tax incentive as well as your foreign pre-sales. Um, and then they'll give you the money for that with a premium, of course. And all of a sudden you've hit your strike price for the movie. That's amazing. Thank you so much. That honestly is probably the, the most simple way that it's been explained to me so far. So thank you very much. <laughs> no, of course. I mean, like I said, there's, a, you know, there's steps in between, but, but I, I you know, it, that's kind of the, the, I, what I believe is one of the safest ways to make, to make film, you know, is to, 
to do it with that um, model. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And it's so good to speak with you. Just finally as well, if you were to give one like little snippet of advice for a new filmmaker, what would it be? It's not going to be easy, but so many people give up on their dream right before the success is about to come. And so keep pushing and know that you have to fight for your dreams and it may take time. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. Thank you.